Fitness Podcast. RamblingFitness.com. RamblingFitness.com. Uh, well, today we're going to have an expert discussion. This is something that I am. Um, I want to explore some more. I want to bring on different guests, uh, not just for our interview series anymore. Um, that's something that will be ongoing and something that, again, is um, we've had some success with is uh, bringing different experts from different fields on to discuss their background and, and what they do. But now I want to take that with a twist and bring in experts to talk about a specific topic. I almost have a roundtable discussion like um, talk or debate uh, about various topics. So today we are bringing back the big Cairo, Dr. Grant Robrowski. How are you doing, Grant? What's going on, Fred? <laughs> Um, not too much, man. Not too much. So, uh, you know, sitting around this week, and uh, we're talking about Osgood Slaughters. And, um, you know, for me, I grown up, I had a friend who had it. And when I was 12 years old, we made fun of him because of the name, right? You know, very mature. And it was characterized knee pain. We would play sports, jumping. I mean, you're 12, right? Jumping, running around, um, some severe knee pain form. Um, you want to give a little rundown about Osgoods and just the Maybe just a nice little overview about it for our audience. Yeah, I remember I talked to you a couple of days ago because uh, we had a bunch of cases of Osgood Schlaughter's came in. Um, we had IT band syndrome come in, plantar fasciitis come in, and that's just some of the stuff that athletes and guys you work with are going to have eventually. That's just the way life goes. Now, with Osgood Schlaughter's, what happens is it technically it is knee pain. It's actually tibial pain, your shin bone, right about two, three inches below your kneecap. What happens with Osgood Schlaughter's usually happens during a growth spurt um, with teenagers anywhere between 12 and 16. Actually, I had a patient that was 17 and had it too. So what happens is usually the muscle is so tight that the quadricep pulls on the kneecap, that pulls on the patellar tendon, and it starts to pull the bone away from the tibial tuberosity, or the tibial tubercle. And I think, and, and the reason why this topic uh, excited me to talk about is, uh, you know, this value proposition that we're doing on the podcast right now. I mean, it's every content that I do, including our Instagram posts, uh, Ramsley Fitness on Instagram. I'm really just trying to give people value about things. And Osgoods is something that, on um, you know, if you don't have it, you probably haven't even heard of it. Um, but for those that are experiencing knee pain in those years, 12 to 16 primarily, this is a topic where there may be lack of information, confusion. People, uh, you know, they Google things nowadays and it comes up and now they go to doctors. Um, how can somebody, if, if this is something that they feel is going on, you know, maybe, they're at, maybe their son or daughter or they, the kid themselves is having knee pain, like what should they be doing? Like should they just try to ice it at first or should they immediately try to work through maybe seeing a professional? So the big thing right away is you don't know what it is. So you are a little scared. Nine times out of ten, everybody brush, brushes it off as growing pains. Um, I know, actually, that I had Osgood Slaughter's. It went undiagnosed, though. I can feel my tibial tubercle. It's actually farther away in one leg compared to the other. It's really easy to diagnose. You push right on that spot just below the patella, and the patient lights up pretty much. Ow, that hurts. Ow, it's a sharp pain. Please stop doing that. That type of thing. Legally speaking, you should go to a PCP, a chiropractor, some sort of a doctor that can diagnose it. As far as what to do, it is an overuse injury. So usually it comes with athletes that are either running or jumping. So either track and field or basketball. Nine times out of ten, that's the sport it is. Now, the, the treatment protocols vary from doctor to doctor. Some will say PT, some say rest, some say this. That. So I'm going to tell you what I do. Good. If you want. <laughs> yep. Because mine actually works. I've had five patients. Yeah, five patients in the last six months that have had it. So we strengthen, like you said, we strengthen the overall musculature, teach them proper technique, and squatting and jumping. That's the best way to treat it as far as prevention goes. Now, the, the big problem with it is that, again, the muscle, the quadriceps muscle, are so tightened up that that's actually the cause of the problem. Yeah. I, the, the thing that we have been really getting into 
Um, we've been having some success with our clients ages 8 to like 12 right now. Uh, we have a program specifically at our uh, fitness station in Warrendale, PA, where we're looking at basic motor mechanics. So, again, that is looking at like things like uh, imbalances uh, specifically with, with – we focus on muscles. I mean, we're fitness. Um, we're looking at strength, power, explosion, things like that. So my main focus tends to remain there on, like, leg imbalances, like one leg's stronger than the other, one leg's weaker than the other, one's more tight than the other. Um, variety of causes – Musculature tends to play a big role, and the one thing I, I want to hit before before we go anywhere else is, I like the way you describe this as uh, almost like an overuse injury. And for people out there in the audience, they may be maybe more familiar with something like plantar fasciitis in their foot from like doing five Ks and running. Is this, in a nutshell, in a very basic, in a very very basic way, it's very very similar, just in a different location, your knee instead of your foot. Technically. <laughs> Strictly technically, yes, it is inflammation of the muscle, but with Osgood Slaughter's, it's actually pulling out the bone. The bone gets pulled away from your tibia, that little point right up right. top, right below your shin, or right below your kneecap. It gets pulled away and ripped off and recalcified every minute. Right. So yes, it is inflammation of the of the muscle, strictly speaking. The best way to fix it, again, is dealing with the muscle problems. Any idea if this is genetic at all, or is it in terms of just their development? No, it's not genetic. It's just they're going through growth spurts, so the muscle's growing fast, the bones are growing fast. Everything's in chaotic spin right now. Mm -hmm. So it's just trying to, the body's just trying to catch up, and it's hard to do that when you're jumping around all the time. Okay. Um... I'd like to learn maybe about, so, you know, you've seen five patients in the last six months with it. Maybe walk through, like, the worst case of that or if they're all pretty comparable and how you started. You know, what were the first steps uh, working towards a solution? Because walking around with extreme knee pain is not desirable. Um, I'd like to learn more about that from you. Yeah, so the first steps is diagnosis, making sure you know it is what it is. It, if it sounds like Osgood Schlatter's, nine times out of ten it is. But need to make sure that it isn't something worse. So we do the initial exam, palpation of the tibial tubercle. If need be, we will take x-rays to make it sure, again, it's nothing too serious. After that, the treatment usually consists of some type of an instrument-assisted connective tissue technique. That's where we iron out the muscle, you know, grass and connectics. There's a couple hundred companies now. They all have the same thing. Got a random question for you. Because, um, folks, this is what I do. I don't come in here with a script. I, I have conversations with people. I'm very genuine, right? Um, something that's been intriguing me, I don't know anything. I, don't, I, I hardly know enough about this to even make my own opinion. And maybe you're, you find yourself in the same boat, or maybe you're not. Um, cryotherapy. It's, I keep hearing this buzzword, uh, essentially cold. Uh, chambers to try to deal with joint pain, things like that. Would that would this would that have any any benefit on someone with Osgoods? Would you know? I don't think it would really benefit. To be honest, I have seen I have done some investigation into cryotherapy, and it does look like it does help a lot of things. The fluctuation of the body temperature actually can stimulate everything from the joint to your thyroid. So right. it's it's really fascinating stuff. That said, cryotherapy, and we we are talking about the negative one hundred. Yes. Yes. Okay. That's yes. hot. Okay. Yeah. Because cryotherapy includes everything from that to put an ice pack. <laughs> these little yes, three by five ice packs. Yes, I, I'm speaking places. What I'm hearing is they're opening up treatment facilities specifically for like a cryotherapy. I don't know if it's a pod, a chamber, or a tub, or something where you're, you are, it's it's like Antarctica. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a place down the strip that does that. I can't remember what they're called. But yeah, it is it is very good for a lot of things. Osgoods, I wouldn't say so. Because Osgoods happens, again, teenagers. So mm -hmm. it's not really a long-term issue. It do, Osgoods does resolve itself, and unless it's a very severe case. If... So if somebody's suffering from uh, Osgood-like symptoms, could you maybe give a bullet point list 
of what they would be experiencing. Uh, I don't know, anywhere from two to, to five or seven uh, different things that they would feel. Yeah, you, you'll feel sharp pain, again, about two inches below the patella. Usually happens after any extended activity, running, jumping, going to sports, that type of thing. It'll feel almost like a growing pain, but it's very specific, pinpoint. You can actually, every patient that comes in, they'll mm. say it's right there. Okay, you have you have those good. Yeah. Is it immediate? So, for instance, someone plays a basketball game for, whatever, two hours, and they have the knee pain then? Or is it something that over time, as they're like resting at home that night, starts to act up? It's more, um, again, it's an overuse injury, so it's more... Builds up, builds up, builds up. Okay. Because, again, it's ripping the bone off, bone's reabsorbing, recalcifying, it's ripped off again. So it's it's a prolonged thing. What are some action steps for people that are suffering from Osgood uh, slaughters or Osgood's, like, symptoms? The things we just talked about, they're the inflammation, uh, uh, the, you know, the things that stem from inflammation. Should they follow, like, the rice protocol or ice heat kind of stuff? I'm not a fan of the rice protocol. Actually, it... Um, I don't know any athletic trainers that still do that. I think that got kicked out probably 10 years ago. Um, the biggest thing, ice, take down the inflammation. You need to strengthen the right muscles. So when whenever you do have Osgood, there's usually a muscle imbalance. Right. One, uh, usually the quadratus is just knotted up, full of scar tissue, adhesions, trigger points, whatever you want to call them. It's not moving properly. So I would say foam roller on the quadratus, um, strengthen up the hamstring, any of the abductor, adductor muscles. Um, if that doesn't work, if it doesn't help, you can find a practitioner that does, again, either Graston, Connectix. Uh, it's called in instrument-assisted connective tissue mobilization. Um, we could probably talk for about two hours about it. It's actually, you'd, you'd probably enjoy it. Probably it's would. really fascinating stuff. It works down to the cellular level. And it everyone I've used it on, I haven't had any bad results yet. Interesting, interesting. So those now that understand how to, how to you know treat the symptoms when they arise, um, they understand they should probably see somebody to get it diagnosed officially. When we say strength training or muscle imbalances, and we're talking you know, the quad muscles tight, is this something that somebody should just like Google leg workout or quad, you know, quad muscle workout, or you know, like like how severe is Osgood's in terms of looking to get professional help for this? So for and the reason I'm saying this, I want to set the stage. We deal with a lot of clients that are at, that are at, you know middle aged, average, you know, they're not overweight, or you know, they're just very. At, you know, working 40 hours a week, down down the middle, and they we're seeing a lot of people suffering from pain from imbalanced musculature. We're seeing back especially, people crunched all day, you know, uh, bent over, working on paperwork, then they drive in the car, then they come and watch TV, and then they're not going to the gym and using any sort of strength exercises. So when we're talking about and, – and, and on that point, these people are actually having pain to the point where they're, they're seeking – every single thing imaginable, altered medicine to, to personal trainers, to exercise physiologists, to chiropractors, like they're almost at their wits end to the point where they're experiencing pain. And, and you know this, even my girlfriend has um, pain from car accidents that resulted in all kinds of shifts going on with musculature and spinal cord stuff and bones and, and, the, and the whole nine yards. So when we talk about Osgood slaughters, is this something that when someone's listening, should they be – Panic's a bad word and overdramatic, but is this something that is a severe or a very uh, important disorder or, or what have you, or is it something that nowadays it's 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 minor? We can handle it. It's 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 easy to to uh, assess and to uh, monitor and plan for. Actually, it's relatively easy. Um, technically, I don't even like to call it a disease. Right. That's just how they named it. I thought the same thing. I, it's <laughs> really not a disease. It's just inflammation of a muscle and a tendon and a little bit of the bone getting pulled off. There are severe cases, as there are with anything. But that said, it's very easy to fix. It does. It will resolve itself eventually. just depends on 
if you try to push through it, like if you keep jumping rope 300 times, even with it's hurting, you will get the bone pulled off. It will scar, but they're not going to cut your leg off. Right. The surgical intervention, I couldn't tell you 100% because I don't do that. Right. But I don't think it would be that frequent. Okay. Good. I, I think that's important for people to understand, too, is I think we're in a day and age with with uh, medical health fitness where it's sensationalism, it's um, fear-mongering, oftentimes about a lot of different things. And half of my time spent on the Health Force podcast is fighting people blowing things way out of proportion or doing it in a way so they can sell you a product. So when, you know, and I want to make this clear for the audience. Now, when we're talking about Osgoods, this is something that's completely controllable, something that they can easily handle, um, maybe probably in conjunction with just a trusted professional. But this is not something that is like, oh, my God, I can't believe my son has that, right? That yeah, that's usually um, parents are going to freak out. It's just what you do, that your baby is hurting all the time. It's it's easy to fix. It takes um, – actually, Nicky will be done probably on Saturday. He's coming in for his last treatment, and he's doing a lot better. It used to be he could try – he tried to squat down. He probably got maybe, I don't know, 15, 20 degrees right. down. You know, like a half squat at the gym. Right. Down at Planet Fitness. Right, right. <laughs> now – Dig, baby. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> uh, we've been treating him for two weeks now with the IST or the Connectix therapy, and he's going below parallel, no problems. He's feeling better, so it's it's easy to treat. It's easy to find. It's just you have to know what you're looking for. Good. All right. So th- this intrigues me now. This is a, this is a good good segue. So someone like that who is progressing in their treatment plan, they're significantly reducing their pain. They're strengthening the musculature. Um, that you know, it's almost it's almost like a like a rehab type setting, right? Where we're, you know, we're taking inf- an individual with uh, inflammation and different pain points and treating that first. Should he, so someone like that then afterwards go on the offense and make sure that they go to a proper strength program or a strength conditioning type of format to make sure that they're going to continue to build that uh, build that structure up. Yeah. Okay. Well, the, <laughs> You'd be surprised. <laughs> I, I hate to be that blunt about that, that. Yeah, the best way to pre- to treat anything is to prevent it. Right. So you should be going to the gym. You should be working out stabilization muscles, balance coordination, uh, vestibular coordination. You should be working not on your bench press, but making sure you can squat right, right, and be able to walk around in the dark. I find often exercise, when it comes to the programming side, sounds counterintuitive on the face of it, often. When somebody tells me they've got pain in their lower body, my remedy, most times, strength training in the lower body. Um, so, so, like, for instance, I'll give you an anecdotal story. Uh, my lower back, thank God, it's been for forever, but there was a point probably two years ago where I wasn't, I, again, just starting the business, you know, if you start to do the, the timeline of kind of how Rams of the Fitness was, was born three years ago, uh, about two years ago, so it was when, right in the thick of it, right? Right, you know, not in the very beginning where we were just getting off the ground, but we started to have clientele on a consistent basis. I was working five, six, seven days a week, getting up at four in the morning, going to bed at 10. Um, really was the only one on, I was the only person that we had. And so exercise at that point became a big problem. I, you know, I, I hate the excuse of time. I get that a lot. Now, if the professionals, people tell me they can't work out because of time. Here I am, was being that guy. I get to the gym probably once or twice a week. And for me, and for anybody for the most part, that's just not that, that's just not optimal. That's just nowhere close. I, I, I definitely prescribe four to six days a week doing something of planned activity. doesn't mean you're in the gym lifting weights hard, but hiking. I mean, all, all the stuff to, to get your body uh, moving around. And so what I would experience is low back pain. Think about it. I'm in the car driving. Uh, that's, you know, for in-home service, driving all the time, not working out. Um, I would get back pain. And you know what? The number one exercise, whatever I did, would relieve it. It was the deadlift. Believe it or not, it was the deadlift. And so that's something that someone would think, well, I should avoid the deadlift because my lower back hurts. I'm going to skip that today. And I actually got relief from it because I think it was engaging muscles that were just sitting there. How does that story strike you about just things that, doing, you know, things that don't sound? So like here, if someone that has Alzheimer's flowers, they're thinking, how am I supposed to do squatting and do neg- and do leg exercises if I'm in pain or if I'm just getting out of rehab, like I, I think their first reaction is going to be to feel uneasy about that. 
Yeah, I'm actually, uh, there, there's a constant argument with me and my buddy about this. He hates deadlifts for low back. I love them because there's honestly no better way to strengthen the surrounding musculature. The deadlift is the best workout. That's one of the top ones I, I recommend. The bottom line, though, is proper form. Right. You have to have proper form with everything you do. Otherwise, it's just, it's, there's no point to it. You're just making everything worse. Could an improper fo- could an improper form, or going to the gym, thinking that you're going to help your Osgoods actually end up in you resulting doing worse if you're doing it incorrectly? Um, as far as Osgoods go, I wouldn't mm-hmm. say. But okay. uh, a case like uh, what plantar fasciitis? Um, what's the other one? IT band. They're, they're going to the gym will help. It's just people go to the gym a lot of times, and it's let me put on the max weight. I'll do two reps. That'll count. That, that doesn't work. That's not how you live. You pretty much want to train to live. Like with um, a couple of my older patients, we don't really do deadlifts or anything. Right. We don't do overhead press. We do sit down in the chair, get out of the chair, because that's what I want them to do. We want to make sure they can get off the toilet, because that's an embarrassing story if you get stuck on the toilet. Yeah. And, I mean, it sounds like you've been there, so that, that, that that's good. Uh- <laughs> no, no, no. I, I had a patient, um, a nurse. She actually got hurt because her 400-pound patient couldn't get off the toilet. Yeah. So... That was two people hurt because somebody didn't know how to sit down and stand back up. And I, and I and I tell you what I um I think p- people really and actually I want to take a little bit of a twist here on this um because I know I I can tell you now there's gonna be some, somebody in the audience that's gonna be 35 years old or 25 years old or something and they're gonna say oh I think I have Oscar slaughters now so let's address that if somebody is having knee pain maybe it's below the patella. And they're 25, they're 30, they're 50. You know, can we tell them right now from those parts, it's not going to be all good. It's not all good. Okay. okay. So yeah. that, that, yeah, that will resolve itself by the time you're 22, 23. That's when the body is officially done growing. That's it. Okay. So, <laughs> so if you somebody don't have Osgoods, good, um, I would recommend either talking to a PCP or coming in for an eval, and we can figure out what's going on, but it's definitely not as good. Okay. If somebody is, let's say, 25, 30, 35 years old, and they have that knee pain, and they come see you, Dr. Grant, uh, what do you th- like? What are the most common causes of that that, that you may see if you see that uh, often? Oh, pain. it can range anywhere from like an ACL, PCL, MCL sprain, strain, tear, um, a meniscus tear. It could be a problem with the gastroc. Honestly, it could be a problem all the way down to the ankle or up in the hip. It's not necessarily in the knee. Um, did you go over? Did you tell them about the closed kinetic chain? Uh, no. Mm-mm. No. Okay. Nope, I haven't hit that one. So small. <laughs> Very brief version. Yeah, the brief. actual version of it well, is uh, <laughs> it's about 20 pages long. <laughs> if the foot is out, or if the foot is not hitting the ground and staying on the ground the right way, and it's tilted, the knee will counteract that by tilting the other way. And so it goes from, again, the ankle to the knee to the hip to the SI joint to the lumbar, or sorry, the LS joint. All the way up to C1, C0, your occiput, and that first vertebra in your neck. Is that to make sure, it, uh, that, is the body doing that to stay somehow in balance or in neutral so that they're not tilting left or right? Yep. Okay. The, there's actually a nerve in your spine that, in between up here, sorry, I just realized people can't see me. Yeah, right. There, there's, a, there's a nerve, actually, in your nervous system that's responsible for keeping you perpendicular or parallel, sorry, parallel to the ground. Right. So if you're, like, tilted to the side, your body will actually compensate it. That's why you usually have scoliosis people, people with scoliosis. Right. Are tilted, but their head will tilt to compensate. Right. And so where I 
take the same concept. I mean, so no, we haven't done a podcast yet on the kinetic chain, but we've done this. Our movement, our movement mastery assessment, we do a gait analysis, like our version of it. We don't put someone on a treadmill. I want them sprinting in real life like they would in a sport. And so once they get to, like, top end speed, I mean, we have we have them recorded on, on camera. We see the same thing. And so when someone comes to me, for instance, for sp- the big buzzword, speed training, my kid, you know, my kid needs to get speed. And, you know, I, we were seeing this other coach and we would do cone and ladder drills and all this, you know, footwork stuff for me. Oftentimes, what, we, what, we, what we're able to pull away from that camera boils down to this. You want to move from point A to point B in a straight line and move forward. So, you're, you know, you're running forward. And oftentimes, a lot of cause, you know, the causation of a lot of your, quote, unquote, I guess, slowing down or not being as fast is movement side to side. And it's, it's the same sort of concept where if you're stepping with your right foot and your whole hip shifts right, your upper body shifts left. Uh, otherwise, you would fall, or instead of going straight, you were going to drift off to the right, drift off to the left. So we see a lot of that, too, things that are, you know, from all, like you said, ankle does one thing, vault, knee's going to do this to do the other thing, hips go this way, head goes that way. Um, something is actually pretty common, and it's not something that we take a whole bunch of time and say, all right, your entire program is now just that. But uh, it's, certainly, it's certainly something that, that is common, um, or just the way body works, people understand mechanics. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Gate analysis is very, it's a very complex system. Yes. I know it looks like we're just watching you walk or run, <laughs> but we are watch, watching everything from a heel hitting the ground the right way all the way to your arm going back enough. Yes. It is extremely complex. So what I want to do is maybe give a couple of action steps or uh, next leads, next tips for, for individuals here. Um, why don't you run down your information again for everybody for us. We, we didn't hit it in the beginning, so I want you to hit it up now. Do the whole shebang. If you have a website, the address, the phone number. Like, how can somebody who's sitting out there thinking, okay, my knee's hurt, or my son you know, or daughter's knee's hurting, they're 13, right below their kneecap. Okay, I'm in the Pittsburgh area. How can they maybe find out for you to get that, for that eval to confirm? Yeah, you can uh, go to our website, bigcairo.com. It's very easy to spell. Uh, again, my name is Dr. Grant Herboski. Not so easy to spell. Uh, we're down in 101 Emerson Avenue in Aspenwall, PA. Uh, about 15 minutes up 28 from Pittsburgh. Yeah. So you, uh, you can just give me a call at 412-708-3887, and we can get you in, find out what's wrong, and how we can fix it. So I'm big on uh, having trusted sources, and there's a reason why you're back on the podcast for a second time, and why there's people in Pittsburgh who haven't been on a first time. And no, it's not that I'm some sweet radio guy that we have a big audience. Now that's not that I'm self-aware, um, but I'm not gonna. I, I'm very picky, actually, uh, picky about who I trust. And again, like I, like I mentioned earlier, half the podcast is banging on other people who are saying the wrong things. And I, you know, my my classic philosophy is as follows. You can do two things to produce good in the world. You actually produce good or you remove bad. And so for me, uh, I know a lot of people avoid conflict and don't like to do that. But for for me, if I can save somebody from falling for misinformation, that's still good to me. So when it comes to trusted sources or referrals or anything like that, that um, when it comes to myself and and my reputation and business, um, I take it super serious. And uh, Dr. Grant is definitely somebody that fits the bill. Uh, He's worked uh, with my family personally, uh, worked with my girlfriend. So uh, it's not something that I take lightly. So if you guys are in that area and do have um, any sort of symptoms that fit the bill or to come in for an eval or looking for a, a chiropractor, it's not a field. Look, self-admittedly, it's not a field that I know a ton about. Like, I don't know everything that Grant does to people. I've never seen a chiropractor. I don't see one. But what I'm saying is when it comes to these topics that we're discussing, when it comes to chiropractic, it is a field probably just like mine where there's good chiropractors and there's bad chiropractors. And, um... Grant's one of the good ones. So if you do are in the area to have a chance to come see him, uh, I highly, highly recommend you taking out the time. Grant, is there anything uh, that you'd like to leave the podcast with? Any information? Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, we just special um, – my specialty is shoulders, knees, low back, and headaches. That's the one I see the best results with. There is another doc in the office. Um, if there's any patients with wrist problems um, – 
wrist problems. What's that word? Fingers. <laughs> Hold on. I can't remember it. That's, that's how many cases I treat. Carpal tunnel syndrome. Carpal there tunnel. we go. There go. <laughs> uh, I haven't seen great results with that, but uh, Dr. Mike, he sees, I'd say, a good five people a day with carpal tunnel. He does really good work with them, so... I think we're, we're, we're getting to the point here where people are starting to take their health way more serious, and, and I'm, I'm very, very happy to see that start to move that direction. Still a lot of work to do. I still feel like we have too many people that think the Internet has all the answers. I Look, Internet is great because some things, you, yes, you can. Um, I, I do love that question like where I have people will, will ask me, um, how do I do this or how do I do that? And there are some things where you can go to Google.com and literally – uh, search how to X, Y, Z, and you can go ahead and do it. Now, listen up, perk your ears up. When it comes to health and fitness, that is something that I continue this day to argue that that, that should not be your first go-to is some Internet guru writing some article that you don't know who the hell he is or just to leave yourself to know this. This is a field that, Grant, just so everybody knows, how many years did you spend in secondary education, like after high school, to become a chiropractor? Hold on, i got to get more fingers. So four... <laughs> After high school? Yes. Um, or like college, four, you know. seven plus two years. So about eight, nine years. Okay. So. And then <laughs> we've been doing this. Uh, I've had about four years of clinical practice in my office. So a long time. Yeah. So chiropractors are like real doctors, right? These are people that, that just get a certification on the computer and then they open up an office. This is something that they take a lot of time to study. And so for the average population to think that they can find every single solution on the computer, I feel it's a mistake. Your time is worth more than scouring the Internet for articles that will uh, contradict one another day to day. Um, highly recommend looking up professionals. It's the same, the same value proposition that I make for fitness is, um, you know, we, we're, we're going to deal more so with performance in the active side of things where people that come in with severe pain, you know, we, 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 you know, we try to refer out to someone like Grant and to put them, the, our, our clients in a position to, uh, to succeed and get their, get, get their real treatment. Like I'm not going to sit here and, and tell people I can, I can cure the common flu or the common cold, the flu, what have you. But, when it comes to exercise, same thing. You know how much information is out there on exercise and nutrition and, all, and, and supplementation and all that? And so, I mean, I, you know, yes, biased, obviously. Um, or else I wouldn't, wouldn't be doing this for a living because I wouldn't see the value in it. But I'm a big, big believer on people. If you find yourself in a situation such as today's example, all good slaughters, seeking out trusted professionals, getting help, working together, become a unit, have several professionals that, that you see maybe if that's applicable to you uh, in order to see yourself improve. That's the bottom line. You've got to see improvement. So the flip side is if you're seeing professionals and they're not and you're not getting any improvement, time to find new professionals. Grant, any sign-offs? Yeah, uh, going back to that uh, improvement, I've had a lot of patients over the years that have seen – chiropractors, physicians, doctors, allopathic, homeopathic, whatever you want, uh, everything under the sun. And they've been seeing them for two, three, four, five years in a row all the time, and they haven't seen any improvement. I, that's just, no, that's not how this works. It does not take that long <laughs> to cure anything. Well, I shouldn't say that. It does not take that long to see improvements. Right. In my office, if we don't see improvements in the first three weeks, okay, we got to go back to the drawing board. Same thing we do. What's wrong? Maybe we missed something. I think people maybe are, you left something out. I think people are afraid to admit failure and or afraid to face results. I know a lot of personal trainers don't record workouts or don't track results because they're scared to have to prove it to somebody. Um, I don't know any other way. I couldn't imagine trying to do personal training and not measuring somebody's progress. So. Um, <laughs> Dude, I hear you on that. People, go see BigCairo.com, please. BigCairo.com. Um, also, our website is RamsonLeafitness.com. RamsonLeafitness.com. Alternative medicine, for the most part, sucks. See you guys.